today's video, we're gonna talk about how to put transfers over milk paint, but also how to know if something is solid wood or not, because we get this question a lot. This piece is what we call mostly wood, and we're gonna show you a few pieces to let you know what it's actually made of. So I'm gonna show you on the back here, it's MDF on the base of this cabinet, and then it has some oak elements and some wood veneer over the top of that MDF. And while it's a nice piece, originally this piece was a compare at 439, our price. Like that was their price when this sold. This is probably from the late 80s, early 90s, and it was still what would be about $1,000 today. We paid $19.99 at Savers for it, and we're gonna give it a fun French country makeover. I know you're shocked. French country cottage, that's totally our jam. Okay, we're out in the garage. You can see we're missing the back plate on this. One completely, that's gone. And this one's bent, so we're gonna replace this little knob portion here. So this is held on with a couple of nails. I'm just gonna pry this off, doesn't take much. I'm gonna save those nails because I need those later. And we're gonna make a mold out of this. So a couple weeks ago we showed you how to use the amazing mold putty to add detail to a piece. This time we're going to show you how to use it to replace broken or missing pieces. And these molds are reusable and you can use them for like chocolates and food. They're food safe once cured. Okay and then you're just going to knead together until they're a nice yellow consistency and there's no white streaks in it anymore. Ready to go. I'm just going to kind of make it the shape I need it, press it down over. I like to get the bottom as flat as I can. Sometimes I'll even just use the box. That's gonna help you level out your mold. And sometimes I like to press just to make sure I'm getting all the details. I'm gonna let that sit. While we're waiting on that to cure up and dry, this old gross gum is gonna come off of here. This is just a window scraper. Excellent tool for cleaning up old furniture and gross things like that. I'm gonna sand that a little bit. We're removing these because we're actually gonna replace the knobs in all four to match. And we're gonna paint this piece here because the molded piece going up here, it's all just gonna be painted. It won't pull out. This is just the base coat. We get asked a lot about layering paint, how to do it, so I thought this would be a good video. The base coat is going weathered wood by DIY Paint. All the paint and products you see us using today can be picked up at JamieRayVintage.com and Zeb will go ahead and drop the link below for every product that we use so that way you can find it in the description box. So a lot of people have been asking us to use brighter finishes and, and more color. And we use a, we really do use a lot more uh, matte kind of gray, white, uh, brownish tones in our design because that's more our style. And we've done lots of the brighter finishes. We've got a playlist. It's called uh, How to Blend Paint, and you can find all kinds of really bright finishes. So a lot of you have seen those, but some haven't. So I just want to make you guys aware we do have over a thousand videos, and a lot of them are edited tutorials where we just focus on one finish. And we are gonna be mixing in some colors. This is just a good base color here. So on this piece, this paint is minimal to no prep. It sticks really well to a lot of surfaces. If you have a really slick, shiny surface that has almost like a mirror finish or you can see your reflection in it a little bit, you're gonna wanna scuff that down with some 220 grit sandpaper. But on something like this, just wash it down. We like to use just regular dish soap to scrub our things. It degreases pretty well. It gets the grease off the piece pretty well and the paint's gonna stick fine to this old oak. We are going to be putting milk paint over the top of this DIY paint. One of the questions I get asked a lot is what color is my buffet in my kitchen and my big hutch in my family room painted? And the truth is it's no exact color, it's a mix. So we use 50% Sweetie Jane to pantry door. I like to use these little scoops and I buy my milk paint by the gallon because it's cheaper. So if there's colors you find yourself using a lot, buy them by the gallon, store them in a Tupperware and you'll save money on your projects. I've got one scoop of each color here in my cup and I've got warm water. Warm water is really important for mixing. And I like to do just a little bit less than 50-50 so it's a little bit thicker. You can use a whisk or an immersion blender. I'm just gonna peel this back and I've got an exact impression of the other knob backer that we had. 
And I just cut, I had this pooch out just a little bit, so I cut around the edges with the scissors before I demolded it. That way I've got a nice hole for the screw or bolt for the knob to go through. So this is amazing casting resin. Side B, I'm just gonna do a little bit. This mold's not gonna take a lot. You can measure and write how many ounces your mold takes if you want. I'm just gonna do equal parts, side A, side B. You want them to be really even. You don't wanna not have the right amount in there because if you don't, it won't set up. This is gonna dry hard, nice white color. If you wanted to do clear, if you had like some jewelry or something you were doing, we also sell amazing clear cast, and that also works for tabletops, countertops, it gives you a really hard, almost like an epoxy type finish on the top. When you're stirring this up, it's gonna get a little milky, and then once you have it all mixed up, it goes back clear. You wanna stir for about 60 seconds. So I'm just gonna come over the top of this weathered wood and paint it with our secondary color. Then we'll do wet distress and bring back that weathered wood color, get it to chip a little bit. We'll be ready for an IOD transfer. So the milk paint is a lot thinner. You can kind of see that it's dripping a little and I'm having to catch it. The nice thing is that it does lay pretty flat and especially if you sand it with a sander, you can get it buttery, buttery smooth. And you can go through the milk paint to the base texture of the clay paint below and it gives you a good layered finish. Most old pieces have been painted multiple times, so that's why we like to incorporate lots of colors. We'll get some of that natural wood coming through, we'll get the milk paint, we'll have the clay paint, and it gives you a really nice aged look. I'm gonna demold this. You can see it's pretty fresh. You can let it sit a little longer. I like to pull them out earlier. I feel like I get a lot more castings if it's not completely dried around all the elements of the mold. And you can see how flexible this is. You can do whatever you want with it right now. Glue it down. We like to use Gorilla Glue construction adhesive. And I could even nail it down. You can see I got the imprint for the nail there too. The first coat I did on the drawer, I had watered down, so it didn't get super good coverage. But on the rest of the piece, it was more just to make it not look streaky. And I'm still not worried 100% about coverage because I'm going to come in and distress and wet distress. And I might even come back and highlight some of the um, carved pieces with a contrasting paint color. So it's kind of a process and you have to trust that when you're all done, the overall look is gonna look good. Sometimes when it chips, it chips through the base color. Sometimes it doesn't. In this case, we're seeing some of the base colors, some of the gray, and this is gonna give you that layered chippy look. Just know that it could go back to whatever the base color is. It doesn't always stop at the paint level that you have before, because milk paint has a mind of its own. You can see that right here, there's delicious, gorgeous crackle, and right here, there's no crackle, and that's because milk paint just does its own thing. So I've got a damp rag, and I'm gonna come through and get the milk paint wet, and this will cause it to reactivate and chip a little bit more, but you can also distress. So you can see that you can go through the milk paint to that base color below. And sometimes I like to get it damp, and then I come back and wipe at it, and then we'll probably hit it with a little bit of sandpaper. This is a 220 grit sanding pad. It's real flexible. This is just sandpaper, 220 grit as well. This is starting to crackle and chip and it's gonna do it a little bit more. It'll continue to chip for a little bit until you get it sealed up. I'm just gonna get the loose stuff off and then we'll be able to put our transfer on. We're gonna be sanding the top 120 sandpaper on our orbital. We have to be very careful because this is a veneer. If we go a little bit too far, we'll show you how to fix that up. But I think I can get this sanded without going all the way through. So one way you can tell if a piece is veneer or if it's solid wood is you are gonna get a repeating pattern in the wood grain. You can also look underneath a piece if you don't have a back like this one has where you can actually see where the MDF is at and you can see it's not solid wood. Look up underneath your piece and see if the wood grain is the same down below as it is on the top. And if it's the same, 
assume you've probably got a solid piece of wood. If it's different and it doesn't line up, then you're looking at a veneer, which is a very thin piece of hardwood typically, and you gotta be careful not to sand too far through that. This is a problem that we see a lot. We've got a stain that won't come out even after sanding it. We've got ink that's permeated not just through the veneer, but through the MDF, so that's never coming out. Um, and we have a little bit on the edge where the MDF is showing. So what we're gonna do is darken decrepit. Dark and Decrepit is an all-natural water-based stain. It comes out of your hands, off of your brushes. It's not toxic and has a little bit of a built-in sealer in it and is water-based, so you can layer it to try to hide some of the imperfections but still show some wood grain. All right, so we've got one coat on here and you can still see that stain right there. Oops, so we're gonna have to try to feather in the dark and decrepit and maybe just avoid that area because once we get a second coat on, that should be real close to the same color. We got the Ironwork and Designs transfer in English Twall. They're 12 by 16 sheets. We did that dresser a couple of weeks ago and now we've got two sheets left and a couple scraps. I think this is gonna fit on here perfectly. And I am just using clear wax around the areas. You could go ahead and seal this, but we made sure there's no dust and we're just gonna put the transfer on here and then we'll clear wax over the top of the transfer. So I'm just gonna put the transfer on and then worry about the edges later. I was gonna say, you could try to save the edges, but I think in this case, this is our best option. It's not gonna be a lot. It's gonna be like weird corners. So I don't know that it's, you could use them in small places, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna save the backer just in case. So that's all that's left, not much on the edges. Couple little pieces of design, maybe this woman on the horse up here, but not, not a lot to save. Okay, I'm just gonna distress the transfer a little bit, then clear wax and it will be good to go. While Deb's finishing that, I have golden roll, which is a golden gilding wax. And I'm gonna come in here and just jazz it up. A little gold situation. I love how much control you get with the wax. It doesn't take a lot. And if you want, you can let it cure and then do multiple layers to make it thicker. But I like a nice, thin, soft gold. And this is perfect. You can see where this is just clear wax in the hardware and this is got this has the gold wax over it. This is a little bit more bougie and I also love to go around the frame detail with the gold wax. It's okay if it gets outside the area because I've clear waxed it so it's easy to wipe back. But just kind of make it look a little bit different and then I'm gonna come down here on this part and really shine it up. If I hadn't clear waxed this before, it wouldn't be as translucent, but I didn't want it to be like a really thick gold. I wanted to be able to see the green and the chippy underneath it. Now that this is dried out, that stain is a lot less visible. I'm gonna try just going over the top with one more coat and see if that just evens everything out. We're gonna lose a bit, a little bit of that light wood, but that's okay because this is still a good tone. It's not like a super dark, deep tone with just two coats of this on here. Here's the breakdown of the dresser. It cost us $19.99 plus tax at Sabres. We spent about $20 on paint. We've got $10 invested in the transfer because we only used two sheets out of four. The hardware I purchased in Pennsylvania and I think it was like 50 cents a piece. So we're all, in, yeah, we're all in all about $45, $50 into it. In the shop, we'll sell this little dresser for $195. Online, because it includes shipping, we'll have to add $250 to that for shipping. What's $200, $250, Online, it's $445 because we have to add the cost of shipping to it. If you've been sticking with us to the end of the video, Surprise, we're gonna do a giveaway. We're gonna give away this mold that we made for the hardware and then also gonna send you a box of this amazing casting resin so that you can make your own mold. All you have to do to enter is comment giveaway below and share this video either via text, email, on Facebook, in your community tab, however you share links to videos that you love. The winner will be announced on our thrift haul video this coming Saturday, which is July 17th, 
2021 at 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Purchase this dresser, you can pick it up at jrvhome.com. For the paint and products used today, visit jamierayvintage.com. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in